How's it going everyone? It's all of you from Weather Sponge about thousand and today we're going to focus on the average temperatures you should experience this spring throughout the entire United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather delay content. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather delay content. So the first begin to forecast the average temperatures you'll experience this spring. We of course first need to take a look at the Enzo outlook over the next several months. And as you can see, that we're in the month of March right now, and you see that for the month of March, for pretty much the beginning of spring, all the way up till April, the most likely chance, um, will most likely experience a La Nina for those two months. However, if we were to move on to the other spring months, such as May and June, you see that the chance does increase for a neutral phase. However, I must point out that even though, even though we're expecting to move on to a neutral phase during the months of May and June, it takes a while for the atmosphere to react to changes with the sea surface temperatures. So while we may um, most likely experience a neutral phase by the time we reach the May and June time frame, it's going to be, um, it's likely that we'll most likely experience La Nina type conditions even though during those two months because again it takes a while for the atmosphere to react to changes in the sea surface temperatures in the equatorial pacific so as a result i think for the majority of the spring we should expect la nina type conditions and you're probably wondering well what does that mean for this spring and so what this means for spring is that most likely most uh, majority of the southern United States will experience drier than average conditions as well as warmer than average conditions throughout the southeast as well as more moist than average conditions right around the Pacific Northwest as well as the Ohio Valley region where the Pacific jet sh where the polar jet stream moves straight through the Ohio Valley for a uh, high amount of precipitation to occur and this is where the most unstable air occurs as well because this is where the jet stream dip peaks or is pretty much most noticeable where we do have that cold air interacting with that warmer and drier air for the southward and that creates a very moist and unstable environment right around the um, Ohio Valley and as for the Pacific Northwest we have of course have a Pacific jet stream moving through so it's simply more moist and average and what this means is that it's simply cooler than average for the northern United States and for the southern United States it's primarily warmer than average so based on this fact we can expect warmer than average temperatures for this spring for the southern United States and cooler than average temperatures throughout the Pacific Northwest extending to the northern Midwest as well so this is definitely something we need to be aware of and at least consider when um, when forecasting the average temperatures you should experience this spring. However, there's still other factors we need to take a close look at to really, um, before we could jump to that conclusion that we're going to experience warmer than average temperatures in the south. So another factor, of course, we need to take a look at is the climate um is how temperatures typically are like during a la nina and it, exactly because while the previous map i just showed you um gives a general idea of whether it's warmer or cooler than average during the spring this gives actual temperature averages for um, between the months of March and June and I compiled all the La Nina years and compared it to the long-term average between 1991 and 2020 and these are the average temperatures you should experience this spring throughout the United States if we were to experience a La Nina. Of course, there are definitely differences because every year is different. Some areas experience a drought while some don't. And of course, the sea surface temperatures along the Atlantic and the Pacific do vary from year to year. Um, however, for the most, however, compiling the average of all La Nina years is typically the average temperatures you guys receive throughout the United States. You see that um, throughout Florida, extending to southern Texas as well as southern Louisiana, you see that temp average temperatures primarily hover right around 70s. And by the way, this is in this isn't um this isn't um really high temperatures um calc um calculating the average of this is temperatures overall. So this does include include low temperatures at during the overnight hours as well as daytime temperatures as it, it pretty much combines the two and you see that 
during the um, this spring, you should expect mainly 70 degree temperatures all across the board, including the nighttime and the daytime throughout southern Texas, southern Louisiana, Florida, as well as portions of Arizona and um, eastern California as well could experience temperature at average temperatures in the 70s up to the 70s this spring. And you see that just north of that, temperatures are primarily in the 60s, which includes a larger portion of the United States. This includes the Carolinas, Georgia, Atlanta, um, da Dallas, um, Oklahoma City. You guys are involved with 50, 60 degree temperatures. 50 degree temperatures just north of that. This includes major cities such as Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and more cities such as San Francisco. And then 40 degree temperatures just north of that. And the only area where you could experience primarily 30 degree temperatures um, this spring is right around the Yellowstone National Park area in the extremely high in the higher elevations of Montana and Wyoming. So these are temperatures you primarily should expect throughout the United States during a La Nina year during a spring. However, again, there's other factors we need to take into consideration, but this gives a good, um, pretty much a good blueprint of what type of temperatures you should at least expect during an average La Nina year. And it's definitely something that we're going to base, it is definitely the map we're going to base um, my forecast on where um, because this gives the best representation of average chapters during the spring, during a La Nina. So, um, we're, we're just going to take a look at other factors to see what could um, what could make variations to this average um, for this specific year, 2022. So if I were to show you guys um, um, the drought monitor, this is another huge factor when determining what type of temperatures you should experience this spring because with a drought it's not it primarily doesn't determine what type of weather you'll experience when it comes to precipitation whether it'll be drier and or more moist than average it also determines temperature because typically when you're under a severe drought or when it's drier than average it's typically a lot warmer than average because for one thing is that there's far less clouds in the sky and far less water vapor so a lot of, a lot less shortwave radiation is reflected is reflected um back from the clouds um into space um and also when there's less water vapor and less moisture in all um in the soil in general it create um a lot of that shortwave radiation isn't wasted on trying to break down that liquid water into a gas phase um um in soil because of course in soil the phase of um h2o is liquid and um and as shortwave radiation hits the surface a lot of that is used to break down the h2o molecules into a gas phase and if there isn't enough moisture um, in the soil, then that means that short ray radiation will not necessarily be wasted on trying to convert the H2O into a gas phase. It'll go straight into getting absorbed by the surface, which as a result creates much warmer temperatures in general during a drought. And you see that a lot of the areas, I'd say just west of the Missouri River Valley are in a severe drought at this point and i think that should be a big determinant on what type of temperatures you'll experience this spring as i do expect warmer than average temperatures throughout the western portion of the united states and you see that we're even seeing a little bit of a drought occur here along the east coast of the united states and it along with the fact that sea surface temperatures just off the atlantic coast are warmer than average i think it's safe to say that a lot of the east coast as well as Pretty much majority of the areas west of the Missouri River River Valley will experience a warmer than average spring, and uh, areas where you're more likely to experience a cooler than average spring, maybe around the Northern Great Lakes and maybe the Ohio River Valley region where it's a little bit more moist, and of course we do see a more significant jet stream dip during La Nina. How, um, however, I'd say for majority of the United States, it should be a warmer spring than usual. And taking a look again at the Atlantic Sea Surf Temperature Anomaly, you see that the entire Gulf of Mexico and majority of the east coast of the United States 
are experiencing sea surface temperatures warmer than average and of course sea surface temperatures are a huge determinant on air temperature not only in the united states but throughout the war world and when we see sea surface temperatures a couple degrees warmer than average it's safe to assume that along the coast um temperatures will be um, a few degrees above average as well because of course um water it retains a lot of heat and that heat will event will um will spread on to um the air molecules throughout um, um throughout the united states and as all well, it should be warmer than average along the coast and even in areas slightly further inland as well this doesn't even include the areas close to the beach places like new york city philadelphia washington dc as all well, are warmer than average sea surface temperatures um will experience mo most likely experience warmer than average spring temperatures so that's something something to keep in mind um, when making this forecast and if we were to take a look at the west coast you see that sea surface temperatures are currently cooler than average for the most part so maybe along the west coast the extreme western portions of california um, oregon as well as washington it could be cooler than average but it might be offset by the fact that like i said you guys are are under drought in california so maybe Thus, cooler than average sea surface temperatures will be offset by the fact that there's a powerful drought going on. How um so I'd say it'll mostly be average, maybe slightly above average when it comes to temperatures throughout California. Um, but I do still expect cooler than average temperatures throughout the um Pacific Northwest as well as the Ohio River Valley as a result of La Nina and cooler than average Pacific sea surface temperatures. Now, taking a look. At my forecast when it comes to the average temperatures you should experience for this spring so in the areas further southward um you might know you may notice that compared to the what typically happens during a la nina year i'm bringing i'm bringing the area where you should receive um 70 degree temperature average a little bit further northward and this is as a result of the drought that's going on throughout the west coast i do believe that that's gonna raise the average temperature significantly throughout the west coast so i did bring the 70 degree threshold a little bit higher further northward throughout texas and um so and um florida as well as well as arizona and the extreme eastern portion of california and i did the same for the 60 degree temperature readings where areas further northward such as kansas city could receive average temperatures this spring of right around 60 degrees where you typically would receive 50 degrees and you see that this includes las vegas as well um los angeles california is experiencing average temperatures right around 60 degrees this spring um exciting uh, atlanta and even um close to washington dc you might experience average temperatures right around the 60s just north of that i'm expecting average temperatures right around the 50s this includes boston new york city philadelphia this includes chicago this includes cleveland ohio as well as reno nevada and san francisco um where you should experience average spring temperatures right around the 50s just note that i'm expecting temperatures in the 40s this spring um i did put the area of the 40s a little bit further southward in the northern midwest because it is ex um i i am expecting a cooler than average spring for the northern midwest and this extends to colorado wyoming and a lot of the northwest as well and the only areas where you should experience average temperatures are on uh, the 30s is right around wyoming and extending into montana so that's something something you want to keep in mind throughout the United States this spring um, and if you want more specific forecast regarding the average temperature you should experience in your area this spring just make sure to comment your location down below and I'll make sure to give you guys a in-depth forecast regarding the temperature you should experience this spring for your area so make sure to keep that in mind throughout the United States but anyways guys I think you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather like calls make sure to like if you like this video make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather like calls and I hope you guys all have a great day